everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. It's back. We have a P365 on the channel. We had reviewed one oh, about a year ago when they first came out. A local viewer had gotten one of the very first ones that were in the wild. He was on a wait list and got it. And we did a review on it. And we gave it back to him. At the time, you know, there were several different little issues going on with the P365, so we decided to wait, let it mature a little bit, and see if some of the issues went away. So in the meantime, you know, we didn't have one on the channel. We were visiting our friends over at Guns Galore, and he made us an offer we couldn't refuse. So Stryker bought one, and here it is. A few things have changed. Uh, the gun fundamentally really hasn't changed much. There's some availability of magazines. It still comes with a 10 round with a pinky extender and a 10 round that you see in it with a flat base plate. There was very quickly a 12 round magazine available. And more recently, there is now a 15 round magazine available. This didn't exist at the time that we reviewed the first one. And they do have this little replacement base plate. This would be allowing it to work on the XL. It's shorter, so you'd be able to use the same 15 round magazine on the XL, and the magazines come with it. And by the way, I misspoke. Hammer's the one that bought this thing. And DeSantis even now makes a pocket holster for it. I'll turn it so you can see the number. I'm going to turn it the right way so you can see the number, unless you're reading, watching TV upside down and 38 AJ. And coincidentally, this little pocket holster also fits the Hellcat. That's how close these two are to each other. I'm not going to repeat the full review. I'm going to put a link to the full review because, again, fundamentally the gun hasn't changed. But hopefully we'll have a few of the things that were an issue go away. One thing that I will call out, when we had that first one and reviewed it, there was some issues with the sights. The front sight was going, you know, the, being known out in, in the early ones. They had switched it to a dovetail front sight. The one that we reviewed had the dovetail front sight. That completely eliminated the issue with the sight screw coming out and jamming the gun. So even the one that we reviewed the first time, that sight issue was no longer even a potential problem. It uses the same x-ray sights. Now this gun was made in April of 19, so it's about a year later from the original gun that we had. So we're going to kind of see if anything has changed. The sights are nice. That front sight is very easy to see. It's very visible day or night. The rear sights have a tendency to kind of fade out at the range if there's a light of light around you, but they are night sights. It'd be nice if they had the white rings around them like the front sight. Made it a little more difficult to pull tight, screw, tight groups with it even though the gun is definitely capable of it. So if we were to go any further, probably could have done this earlier, it's of course an empty Sig Sauer, it's, so it's not going to bite. And as I had mentioned earlier, very little has changed. It still is a Sig rail as opposed to a Picatinny rail. You know, there's no slot. It's the only Sig compliant accessories will fit on it. Sig Sauer is big enough, kind of like Glock. Companies will make accessories bespoke for it. In fact, there's even a trigger guard laser available now that kind of similar to the Crimson Trace you see on the Glocks on the channel that uses the Sig rail and wraps around and there's a button down here you push to activate it. So the aftermarket is taking off on it. One of the things that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and it still hangs up a little bit, but it still comes apart. The one we had originally did that. And there's still some kind of funkiness with this. It doesn't like to stay down. And if it does come up, it won't go back down unless you lift up on the slide stop slide release. And you kind of may have to hold it down when you reassemble it. Is it quirky? Yes. Is it kind of something they probably could have done a little better? Yes. Is it a big deal? No. I mean, you, once you know it, you know how to work around it. You, know, you may swear at it the first time. Once you figure it out, you know what to do. You just deal with it and it, and it works. The internals really haven't changed much. There still is that quirk. If you pull the trigger while it's disassembled, this little lever right by the end of my finger right there may pop up and hang the gun up. You just have to reach in and push it down. There's a few quirks on it that some of the other guns don't seem to have. There's been no issues that I'm aware of with the recoil spring. We did have some evidence of issues with the barrel on the first one. The first thing we noticed, and it was mostly on this side, there was some kind of peening going on here where it was kind of beating that in a little bit on the on the barrel of the, of the gun we borrowed. I'm not seeing any evidence of that kind of thing here. And more significantly, we did see some evidence of uneven wear here. Get a flashlight in there. 
Well, you see there's kind of a black stripe and a silver ring around it. Well, when the gun was brand new, take it out of the box, it was all black. And on the gun that we borrowed, we had noticed that not only did it kind of wear unevenly, but there was some peening on the edges. This one hasn't done that, but we're going to be watching for that. So it'll be one of the things we'll be watching for is to see if there's any peening. And we've heard reports of striker failures on them, possibly in the two to 3,000 round territory. Sometimes this barrel can be a little twitchy to put in. And the owner of the one that lent it to us has not had any of those issues. So we'll see if this one has any striker issues. One thing before I put it all back together, I almost forgot to point out, there was, on the one we borrowed, all of the coating had completely worn off down there. And you can see this one's got a little shiny spot right there. And there was no visible wear on the barrel. So we'll see if that continues. To the best of my knowledge, that will progress to a certain point and then stop. And as long as you oil that periodically, you're going to be okay, which you would do while you're taking it apart. That I wouldn't call out as a potential failure. It's just one of those things that's kind of noticeable that you, you, know, you notice wear. It's kind of like on the Glock barrels where you notice some wear on the Gen 5 barrels, but it's only visible. You can't even feel it. Now, when I went to put it back together, this popped out of the way. Now I can't push it down. So again, you, you have to push the slide out of the way, lift this up, kind of hold it with your thumb. And then, oops, and then, of course, that was my mistake not to lock it back and flip the lever up. Usually the lever will flick itself up, but I may have had my thumb on it blocking it from doing that. So the takedown procedure is just a hair clunky, but again, if once you know how to do it, it's it works. So we've already done a video comparing this to the Hellcat we'll be publishing in, in an upcoming week. And we'll be using this gun in various comparisons as well as running it. We're not going to do a torture test of any kind on it or, you know, with so many thousand round test. That's been done. There's hundreds of them out there. But we will be paying attention as we use this in different videos, fire it and things like that. We'll be paying attention to how it wears and any issues that we have we'll report. And any lack of issues, if this thing just works, if SIGs kind of maybe made some metallurgy changes to the striker that would prevent the striker failures they were having. Overall, it's a nice little gun. You know, it's compact. It's really kind of perfect for the deep concealed market and gives you the capacity that you tend to lose in those deep concealed guns. So it's not a bad choice in any way. And with the uh, larger mag available, you now have a significant amount of capacity that you normally would take something along the sides of a, a Glock 19 or bigger to get in a footprint that is actually relatively small. And even when you put the mag in it, you get a three plus finger grip and it blends nicely, blends nicely with the grip profile. So overall, it's, it really is a well done gun. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there if you do so you get notified when we publish a video. Check us out on GunStreamer, Patreon, Twitter. We're kind of all over the place now. Have a great day. Thank you. B365.